If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nexus Core, and today I'm going to be going over the deck that I took with me to Springfest 2023 in San Gabriel. The deck did really, really well, so I wanted to show off what I played with. This is pretty much 100% the exact same deck that got 4th place at worlds so i will be sure to leave a deck log to that list as well so that you know, i can give credit to the original person that came up with this list but i really do like the idea of using gurgit along with holy shine so i wanted to take it to spring fest and it did really well so i just wanted to show off the deck profile and kind of deep dive into why the deck performs so well so without further ado let's get started Going on with the starter, we've got Spring Breeze Messenger, um, just something a little different than Coel, and since we're using the Liberator engine, I figure, you know, we're kind of using our more uh, Liberator aesthetic uh, looking starter here, just with the gold and the white. So that's my personal choice there, and we're going to go right into the grade threes, starting off with our three copies of Sunrise Rain at Gurgit. Yes, three, not four copies. Uh, we're running three just because this is our finisher and we want to make more space in the grade three lineup. It gives 5k to units that are called by card abilities. It gives itself 5k for uh, each marker you have. So basically everything you're calling from the deck and calling from abilities are getting like 10 to 25k, or I'm sorry, 10 to 15k each. It has a second skill, which is offensive and defensive, so you can multi-attack multi and extend your attack, so it's just a really good overall finisher. So that's the main focus of the deck, but our main setup, which you pretty much have to ride as soon as you possibly can, which is our three copies of Liberator, Holy Shine Dragon. Holy Shine is what lets you kind of accelerate into your Excel markers. So by riding onto a Liberator, you can search your deck for a different grade three Liberator, ride it, and therefore get multiple markers. Uh, also, if you have four more damage, you can call two things, which helps you build a board, which is all really good, also really good for prominence core as well. So there were a lot of games where I purposefully let my opponent push me to four damage, which is a little scary, but the payoff was really nice when I was able to finish out my deck and still push with a really large board and kind of force my opponent's hand to go down. And then next for grade threes, I ran three copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Prominence Core. It's the only Bluish Flame unit as of right now that is legal in V Premium. Free my boy Percival. Anyways, act, you can retire your rear guard, look at top four, call two things, the rest go to bottom. The second skill is that whenever you call a card, this unit and the called unit get 3k, so this keeps on getting big. If you call an aggro veil while your opponent's at grade three, you can get a crit. So that can be some uh, good pressure there as well. And last but not least, we got the MVP of the deck, Mock Slash Dragon. To quote Miles, he said, anytime I saw Max Slash on your board, I felt safe. So Mock Slash uh, lets you do an extra attack by calling a card from your hand during the battle phase. And that just kind of propels you into multiple attacks. The unit you called is being called by a card ability. So it goes off by Gurgit's effect. So the minute that this is on your board, it's like, oh shoot, my opponent has at least uh, one to two more attacks depending on what their call target is. Uh, also calling Aggle Veil off this is uh, kind of busted. So that is it for all of our grade threes. We're now moving on to the grade twos, starting off with our four copies of Oath Liberated Aggle Veil, which is legal at four as of right now in English. <laughs> uh, so I was able to run four at the San Gabriel tournament. So it gets 10k when you put when it attacks, when you put another rear guard to soul. Uh, also when you ride it, you can kind of blast look at top three and call something. So it's your ideal right target, and it also is what helps uh, Prominence Core get a crit. And you also need to be a liberator to get off a uh, Holy Shine skill, so it is indeed a liberator unit. Speaking of more liberator units, we're running four copies of Liberator of Royalty, Fallon. So Fallon gets 5k when a unit is called from the deck this turn. He also has the effect of when he hits a vanguard, you can look at the top card deck and you may call it. So you can choose to leave it on top of your deck if it's a trigger. And lastly, for our grade twos, still overall a really great card, Wonder Ezzel. So Wonder Ezzel's first skill doesn't matter, it's the second skill, is when this is placed, you can call a card from your hand to rear. This works with Mox Slash Dragon when you're extending your attacks. This also is just good in general because the unit you called is being placed by a card ability, which activates Gurgit's effect. So basically, you call this, anything you call gets an additional 10 to 15k, depending how many markers you have, but also procs off your Dindrains. So you can kind of use those out to worry about calling them from the deck. So that's it for our grade twos going into grade ones. 
This is pretty normal for a V Premium deck, we're running four of our great researchers. Gorbaduck, so when you call two more things, it gets 5k. When it's placed from hand, look at top five, grab a three, add it to hand, shuffle. If you added something in your hand, you discard. Because it's being placed from hand, you can use your, you know, when placed from hand abilities, like with Mock Slash, even during the battle phase, which is nice. It's also just a great right target because it works when you ride it as well. Uh, speaking of really good right targets, we're also running three copies of Liberator Josephus. So Josephus' skill is when, an, when another unit is ridden on top of this, you can look at the top card and choose to call it, or you can leave it on top of your deck. Second skill, when a place from the deck, you can Soul Blast 1 to counter charge and then Soul Blast 1 to draw. You can do both. You can do one or the other. Uh, it's up to you, but overall this is a really good card because Gurgit calls from the deck, Prominence Core calls from the deck, Fallon calls from the deck, everything kind of calls from the deck. Then we have three copies of Dindrain. So Dindra is what I was mentioning earlier. It's just when it's placed by a card ability, you can Soul Blast to counter charge and get 3k, or you can Soul Blast to draw. You cannot do both, unlike Josephus, but this is still really good because you can use it with Mock Slash and Wonder Resolve, which is nice. So we're running a bunch of draw and counter charging because our deck is very counter blast heavy with Gurgit and Mock Slash and Prominence Core and Holy Shine all together. And lastly, I'm running one copy of this promo. Uh, if you don't have this promo, you can honestly just run another Josephus or another Dindrain, but I really do like this card. It's when it attacks a boost, you can solve last one, perform all the abilities based on number of things you called. So if you called two or more, it's 5k. So it's a good 13k beater. Second skill is you can force your opponent to intercept as much as possible. So that means that if your opponent has kind of a decent board, you can, uh, you know, make them, uh, make them use it up. You know, so that way you can get away pesky interceptors to kind of extend your attacks. So this is just a decent way to, uh, you know, kind of force your opponent to do some silly, wacky stuff they might not want to do. And then going on to our trigger units, we've got four of our heal guardians. So those are grade three heal triggers. This is the one where if you have not ridden the grade three, you can give your Vanguard 10k or reduce the crit by two when it's placed in the guardian circle. It's also a grade three, which means it is searchable by Gorbaduck. And then we've got our Sentinels. You can't go wrong with draw PGs. Um, draw PGs are nice because Gurgit has that nice little defensive skill where you can look at top five and call two to Guardian Circle. So being able to rip a PG off the top of your deck is nice. Uh, it's also a draw. That's a PG and you can't go wrong with draw PGs. And this is where the deck gets a little interesting. I did stick with the trigger lineup, which was four fronts. Well, front triggers are really good when you're on the Prominence Core and Gurgit turn because you already have a really big board. So let's just make it bigger with fronts. And then I am also running the four crits. So crits just add pressure and crits win games. I was used to running the deck with just the four fronts. I think four fronts is really, really, really good. I was trying the crits just to be a little bit more aggressive and it worked. I honestly don't think I'd care for one more than the other. I think both work, and I think the crits just kind of help your opponent feel a little bit scared going, oh, they run crits, maybe I should guard the vanguard, you know, or maybe they think, oh, they don't run crits, and then boom, you crit them, and they die. So, uh, it's a high risk, high reward. And that's pretty much it, because that is a V premium deck, it's just the, the 50 cards. So I would like to say that um, the games were tough and there were a lot of good opponents, but I would say overall, if you don't ride your Holy Shine, the deck kind of shuts down. I just got overall really lucky and was able to hit it. So you, the goal here is to ride Holy Shine, which gets you into your prominence core, and then hopefully you ride into your Gurgit by then. And then with the Gurgit turn, you got at least one Mock Slash out and you're doing your, your big old Mock Slash turn there. So yep, that is pretty much it. Thank you again for watching, and I would also like to give a huge, huge shout out to my teammates, Hal and Miles, for uh, putting their A game in and playing some really good games that day at Spring Fest, and overall, it was just a lot of fun. So, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.